Jesus Christ has many titles, such as the Son of God, Son of Man, Messiah, Emmanuel, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Today we want to look at Jesus as the Lion and the Lamb. In the natural, the lion and the lamb are seemingly contrasting types of animals. The lion is fierce, bold, strong and swift. On the other hand, the lamb is meek, tender and gracious. Like a lion, Jesus is jealous and zealous for the true holiness and worship of God. For example, he confronted the money changers, overthrew their tables and said, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. But he had made a den of thieves, according to Mark chapter 11, verse 17. Like a lamb, Jesus was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth, according to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. What is the application for us today? We need men and women who know when to be like a lion and when to be like a lamb. We need men and women who are full of glory mingled with humility, full of uncompromising justice tempered with mercy, full of majesty mingled with meekness. We need to see Jesus and all that he has accomplished on the cross of Calvary in order to be all that we can be in him. I want to read a passage of scripture and show you the prophetic significance of Jesus as the lion and the lamb. Many predictions have already been fulfilled, others will be realized in the future. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, according to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. From the foundation of the world, God's plan for the ages is that redemption is only through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. When humankind fell, Jesus is the only perfect sacrifice to put away sin. The key passage for this message is Revelation chapter 5, verse 5 to 6. Revelation chapter 5, verse 5 to 6. And if there's a title for this message, you'll be called the Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. Revelation chapter 5, verse 5 to 6. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seventh seal thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the Lamb, stood the Lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Here we see John's vision of Jesus, who is portrayed as a lion and as a lamb. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time together, Lord, as we open up the Word of God. Lord, we want to see you in all your glory and all your grace. We want to see you as the Lion of Judah. We want to see you as the Lamb of God. Father, I ask that you anoint our hearts, anoint our ears to listen to your Word, and Lord, that your word will begin to transform us. Father, I just pray that your word will go forth, to accomplish that which you purpose, and that you will not return on your void. We worship and we thank you truly for the precious, precious Lamb of God, the powerful Lion of Judah. And we thank you and we praise you again in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty and blessed name. Amen and amen. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 shows Jesus Christ as the conqueror, the overcomer and the victor. Jesus is the Lion of Judah, the root of David. If we can go to Isaiah chapter 1, sorry, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 to 10, which says, beginning with verse 1, And there shall come forth a rock out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Here we see Jesus, the Messiah, as the earthly descendant of Jesse and David. Now Jesse was King David's father. Even though Jesus was perfect and the Son of God, he was incarnated in human flesh. He was both deity and humanity. 
Philippians chapter 2 verse 7 to 11 says this, He, referring to Jesus, made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and he was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now let's go back to Isaiah chapter 11, continuing in verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. There is a sevenfold anointing of the Messiah, the Lion of Judah, the Root of David. Number one, the Spirit of the Lord upon Jesus, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now let's go on to verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. The Messiah will not judge by outward appearance, or by hearsay, or rumor. Rather, Jesus Christ sees right into the hearts of men. His judgment is perfect. We need the fear of the reverence of the Lord as well as joy and delighting ourselves, taking pleasure in His presence. Now Isaiah chapter 11 continuing with verse 4, But with righteousness shall He judge the poor and reprove equity for the meek of the earth. And He shall smite the earth with the rod of His mouth and the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. This is the mission of Jesus the Lion, to execute righteous judgment and slay the wicked one, the Antichrist, and to execute justice on behalf of the meek. Verse 5, And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Righteousness and faithfulness are the great attributes and qualities of Jesus. Verse 6, the wolf shall also shall dwell the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the cat and the young lion and the fattened together, and the child shall lead them. Verse 7, and the cow and the bear shall feed, the young one shall be down together, shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Verse 8, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the wind child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. During the reign of Christ, even children can play and lead wild animals when they are tamed by the power of God. Verse 9, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The holy mountain refers to the dwelling place of Christ, where the word of God was spread to all nations. Verse 10, and In that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign to the people, to which shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. In that day Jesus, the root of Jesse, the son of David, will come back in all his power and all his glory. He will no longer be lampooned and lambasted. The devil, for too long, is like a roaring lion, walking about seeking who according to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. But Jesus, the reigning and ruling Lion of Judah, the true Lion of Judah, who rose from the dead, is roaring to us, His people, with the gospel of grace. It's a roar of freedom. It's a roar of truth. It's a roar of victory over sin and death. The wicked flee with moment of sorrow, but the righteous is as bold as the Lion, according to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Some people... Some people think that Christianity is for whims and weaklings. The truth is no. You need courage and valor to be a soldier of the cross. We need to stand up for Jesus, these soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner and must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. To every fool is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Christ is Lord indeed. Hallelujah. Chapter 12, verse 11. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is the true lion of 
Judah. Now let's move on to look at the aspect of Jesus as the blessed Lamb of God. Jesus is also the blessed, blessed Lamb of God. John chapter 1 verse 29 says, The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Oh, this verse of scripture thrills me over and over again. Behold, behold, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now notice this. I want you to notice this. It's, this verse says sin, singular, not sins, not plural. It means that Jesus takes away the sin nature, not just acts of sin. Jesus addresses the root of sin for past, present, and future. Hallelujah! Jesus is the Lamb of God which was slain from the foundation of the world, according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. If we know a little bit of the Jewish custom, they were to present a Passover lamb in order to experience protection and deliverance from sin and sickness. According to Exodus chapter 12, verse 3 to 6, if we can, if I can quickly read it to you, speak unto you, all the congregation of Israel, say, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take them to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbors next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out of the, from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, that's what the Jews had to experience in order to experience protection from sin and sickness. They had to offer the sacrifice of the Passover lamb. But thank God today, today through the blood of the Passover lamb of God, Jesus Christ, we have the new covenant of grace. We are passed from death to life, from darkness to light. Sin is no longer just covered, but totally, completely taken away once and for all. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you shall show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Perch out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lamb as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed, corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was made manifest in these last times for you Hebrews chapter 9 verse 8 to 14 the Holy Ghost this signifying that the way to the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscious, conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and in diverse washings and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come as a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and a more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works 
to serve the living God. Continuing in verse 22, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. The atoning sacrificial work of Christ on the cross of Calvary is the only solution for sin, not religion, not good works, not psychology, not philosophy, not self-help programs, not education, but faith, faith in the finished work of Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the gospel of grace. Friends, some of you are faithful in offering sacrifices according to the custom of your tradition. You try to be a righteous person, hoping that all your good works will earn rewards, including the chance of going to heaven. See, the truth is we can only be perfect through the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. He paid the price to atone and cleanse us from all sin, all wrongdoings, all unrighteousness. We don't have to, and we are simply not good enough to be holy or righteous in our own strength or ability. It's the grace of God. It's the gift of God. It's the gift of God. Salvation through the blood of Jesus, through the precious Lamb of God. Friends, the Lamb of God wants to offer you a life that is beyond your current situation. That's beyond human limitation. I want to give you an opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life. If that is the desire, we need to first and foremost to acknowledge that we are sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God according to Romans chapter 3 verse 23. And that we be willing to repent from all disobedience and rebellion against God. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Luke chapter 13 verse 3. Believe, we've got to believe that Jesus is the only Savior, the Lamb of God. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. And we need to trust, we need to confess, trust and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe thy heart that God that raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. If, it, if your desire is to ask Jesus Christ in your heart and life, Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, if that is the desire of your heart, then I want to ask that you pray this prayer with me and mean it with your heart. Say it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, say it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I now recognize that I'm a sinner. Say, I now recognize that I'm a sinner. I'm in need of salvation. I'm in need of salvation. I accept the sacrifice you paid for me. I accept the sacrifice you paid for me on the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. Cleanse me with your precious shed blood. Cleanse me with your precious shed blood. I now surrender myself to you. I now surrender myself to you and invite you and invite you to be my Lord and Savior, to be my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. Take full control of my life. Take full control of my life and help me to live, and help me to live and serve you, and serve you from this moment forward. From this moment forward. I ask you in the name of Jesus. I ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Now, friend, you pray this prayer in all sincerity. You are now a child of God. We invite you to write us so that we might rejoice with you. God loves you. We encourage you also to find fellowship in a Bible spirit filled believing church. Spirit filled Bible believing church. Read the Bible diligently so that you can become the Christian God wants you to be. So that you become the Christian God wants you to be. So that you can live victoriously as a child of God. Hallelujah. Even as I close, I want to minister in a song. And even for the next few moments, I want you to continue in prayer. Continue in the spirit of worship. To begin to worship God and thank God for what He's done for you in your life. That you begin to continue to worship the Lord. Even as I minister in this song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from.
From Emmanuel's veins And sinners plunged Beneath that flood Loose all their guilty stains Loose all their guilty stains Loose all their guilty stains And sinners plunged Beneath that flood Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah.